Good morning. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary. No one can measure the depths of his understanding. So you may have heard, um, there's a little bit going on this week. <laughs> uh, so there's a, a few announcements uh, we need to go over. Um, the the radicels are still going on in the pavilion if you want to order there. Um, also after the service, you can um, place um, orders for apple butter. Uh, or if you want, you can call the number there on your sheet uh, to order apple butter before it's all gone. It goes fast. Um, so the, the work begins on Wednesday. Uh, for those of you that have volunteered and are going to help with the, uh, the apple butter, uh, there's uh, that little schedule uh, that Sandy made up that really spells everything out clearly. So if you didn't get one of those, uh, just let us know and we'll get one of those for you. Um, John and Linda also be glad to uh, answer any questions you have on that. Um, fall festival next weekend. Just so think by this time next week, We'll be exhausted. Um, so the setup is next Friday at 9 o'clock in the morning. Uh, we're going to try to get as much done on Friday as we can, and then we'll come back Saturday morning and finish up. Uh, if you're making pie or gobs for the festival and you need pumpkin, we have it, and you can pick it up here after the service. Uh, and make sure that you're inviting uh, everybody you know to come and eat. Uh, we'd love to run out of food. Um, 
you know, if you need any of those signs to put up, let us know. We can get you one of those. Uh, but we're hoping for a big crowd. It's supposed to be uh, chilly, so it'll feel like fall. Uh, so, um, and of course, keep all of this stuff in your prayers, if you would. Uh, the business meeting, this is what happens when they let me do the typing. There's a typo. It is October the 7th, but it's at 6 p.m., not 7 p.m. All right. So I goofed that. So 6 p.m., October the 7th. Um, listen, that meeting is open to uh, anyone and everyone. Uh, you don't have to be a member to come and, and to share your thoughts or opinions. We're happy to hear them. Um, so, you know, anything that you would like to uh, talk to the church about, come on out and talk. I'm sure, you know, we'll discuss about our plans going forward and, and, and what we're going to do as far as inside and outside and all those things, uh, as well as the things that are already on the agenda. So everyone is welcome. Um, everyone is welcome to share their, their thoughts. That's October 7th at 6 p.m. Uh, for those of you that are interested, there is a new Hike with Mike on our website uh, that I put up there this week. Um, we have had a few people start to um, reserve their meals for Thanksgiving, uh, and we're expecting uh, to be uh, to see a lot of numbers there over the next few weeks as people get the word on that. So, again, if you know anyone that could use a meal, or if you could use a meal or two, uh, let us know, um, and, and we'll get that out to you. Uh, and we're still in the planning stages for the journey. Um, we'll get a couple of different ideas, and we got to figure out which one we're going to do. Um, so there's the dates on there, December 5th and 6th. We decided not to do Friday this year, so we're going to do Saturday, Sunday, the 5th and 6th, and then the following Saturday, Sunday, 12th and 13th. I know it's four nights. You might not be able to make all four. Just come when you can. Let us know when you can help out with that. Uh, we need lots of characters for that to, uh, to cover all of the scenes. Um, so, you know, otherwise people have to play a couple of roles and Alan will have to be both kings and then it will really get a big head. Um, so, you know, more people we have volunteering, uh, we would appreciate that. Don't forget, next week is the first Sunday of October. Right, Mark? Hi, Mark. Mark and Gloria are over there because they're quarantining. Uh, so, but next Sunday is... Um, the first Sunday in October, so we will be um, sharing communion. So remember your juice and your bread next week. Um, and also we'll be handing out uh, materials uh, for the shoe boxes next week. Um, a few prayer requests. Um, as I just mentioned, you know, uh, Gloria uh, continues to recover well from the virus, so keep them in your prayers, um, especially... Gloria, because she has to put up with Mark all day for two weeks. Um, continue to pray for Bruce. He's got his procedure coming up on the 8th. And um, one of our, our parking lot buddies, JB, um, is in the hospital. Um, he, he was here for a couple months here in the spring. Um, just one of the nicest guys I've ever met. Yeah, he's in the hospital and is uh, facing um, open heart surgery on Wednesday. So if you would keep him in your prayers, I uh, sure would appreciate that. I think. I think that's all the announcements. So, oh, 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 one very important announcement. Thank you for the beep. <laughs> John had his 80th birthday this week. And he's going to celebrate that in two weeks because he'll be up here preaching her. So... Um, all right, let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this day, this, this glorious morning. We thank you for the, the opportunity to gather together, to worship you, to sing your praises, to look at your word. We are just so thankful. And Father, you have heard the, the concerns this morning that we listed there and the, the prayer concerns, and we ask your hand upon each situation. And we pray for, for quick healing for, for those that are, that are sick. And we pray, Father, for wisdom and, and guidance for doctors and surgeons and nurses, for those that are in need of that. And may each one of those folks 
know your presence and be encouraged that you are with them. We ask you to be their health. We ask you to be their strength. Father God, we pray for all of the events that are coming up. We thank you for the opportunity to serve, and we ask your blessing upon each one of them. We pray for the leaders of our country, and we ask wisdom for them, and we pray for peace to come upon this country again, and may it begin in the hearts of the church. Father, we pray for those that may be struggling this week, whether it's just from discouragement or dealing with, with, with loss or, or, or sick family members or all, all of the, the different things that, that come in life, the, the financial challenges, just all of it. And we pray that you will encourage them this day as well. May they know the presence of the Spirit of God with them. And so now, Lord God, we ask that you will receive the praises of your people as we give you thanks from joyful hearts. In the name of Christ, amen. There once was a man who lived in a small backwater town, never finished high school, went to work with his dad when he was just a teenager. They barely scraped by in a country that was torn by war and political strife, and racism and bigotry were a part of their everyday life. It was not easy. And yet, in spite of, of all of these challenges, he persevered. And he succeeded beyond all reasonable expectations. Despite the, the situation in which he found himself, he, he cared for his family. He cared for his friends and neighbors and he cared for God. He lived his life with, with passion and joy, even when times were hard. And it wasn't easy. You may have heard of him. His name was Yeshua, Jesus. And nothing and no one could stop him then. And nothing and no one can stop him now.
So though we live in challenging times, do not be discouraged. Jesus walks this road with us. So let us also persevere. Let us bring hope to the hopeless. Let us bring peace to the troubled. Let us bring strength to the weary. It is our privilege to do this. It is our calling. It is our purpose. And Christ himself will see it done through us. read to you this morning from the, the book of Luke, the ninth chapter, the 28th through the 35th verse. About eight days after Jesus said this, he took Peter, John, and James with him and went up onto a mountain to pray. As he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became as bright as a flash of lightning. Two men, Moses and Elijah, appeared in glorious splendor, talking with Jesus. They spoke about his departure, which he was about to bring to fulfillment in Jerusalem. Peter and his companions were very sleepy. But when they became fully awake, they, they saw his glory and, and the two men standing with him. And as the men were leaving Jesus, Peter said to him, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. <laughs> he didn't know what he was saying. And while he was speaking, a, a cloud appeared and enveloped them, and they were afraid as they entered the cloud, and a voice came from the cloud saying, This is my son, whom I have chosen. Listen to him.
Now, Spirit of God, and fulfill those words. Yet not I, but Christ through me. Give me the words to speak, Father. Open our hearts to receive your word. Speak to us by your Spirit. We ask in the name of Christ. Amen. So the verses we read together this morning of the, the transfiguration of Christ, as we've come to call it, was an interesting event, to say the least. And, and it took place at, at an interesting time. I mean, the, the, the disciples were coming off a, a, a long stretch of being very busy. You know, if you go back and read, they, they had been sent out and they had gone out and they, they had preached and they had seen people respond to the gospel message. They had seen people healed. They had seen demons cast out and they came back rejoicing about all of that. And then shortly after that, then they, they were gathered as Jesus was teaching and, and he fed 5,000 people with just a few pieces of, of food and, and, and they were amazed by that. And then one night as they're gathered around the campfire and they're, they're talking, Peter makes that great confession. When Jesus says, who do you say that I am? You know, and, and, and all of this is bang, bang, bang happening. Busy, busy, busy. They, they've been going full speed. And, and, you know, we have times like that, don't we? where it's just one thing after another. And, and certainly in, in, in our church right now, we got a lot of stuff going on, and, and, and there's a lot to do. And we'll have times like that. Then there are other times that God will say, let's just take a break. You know, we don't always have to be doing. We do what he calls us to do, but when he says take a break, we take a break. A guy who I have great respect for told me many years ago, when it's time to work, work hard. When it's time to rest, rest hard. <laughs> and I think that's the way we need to be in our walk with Christ. When it's time to be busy, let's be busy. When it's time to just rest and, and, and focus on who he is and on the greatness of our God, then do that as well. And, and, and don't feel guilty about that. Know that that's part of his plan as well. You know, when the, the guys now, after all those events, and they've been standing around the fire, and Jesus says, you know, who do the people say that I am? You know, at this point, it's probably been close to three years that Jesus has been out there teaching. And so, you know, he asks them this question. And, and, and again, it's not because he wants to know. He wants them to think about it as to who do the people say that, that he is, and, and, and what do we make of that? And, and, and they go through it, and of course, my, my favorite one in that conversation is, well, some say John the Baptist. <laughs> well, maybe some that aren't paying attention, but I saw John the Baptist baptize him, so it can't be him. You know, but, well, maybe he died and he came back from the dead. But, you, you know, all kinds of interesting thoughts from people as to who Jesus was. And then Jesus asked that question, that, that powerful question that, that, that rings through the generations, through the thousands of years, right down into this parking lot today. Who do you say that I am? Because that's the opinion that matters for you, for me. Really, all of life hinges on that question, doesn't it? Who do you say that I am? And Peter makes this great confession, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And then Jesus tells him, Now that you know that, understand I'm going to Jerusalem, I'm going to be betrayed, and I'm going to be killed. And it's all part of the plan. And the disciples look at him like he's lost his mind. And their, their faith is, is a bit wobbly. They're, they're, they're shaking, and, and, and Jesus, you know, he, he looks at them, and, 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 and he knows what's going on in their minds, and he says, you know what, guys, let's just, let's just take a break for a while, okay? Let's just hang out, and, and, and we can talk about this, and, and you can kind of let it, you know, kind of filter in there, 
I, I have to wonder if, if Jesus didn't go to sleep at night around that fire, listening to the disciples discuss amongst themselves what exactly this meant as they tried to come to terms with it. And it had been a little over a week. And Jesus takes Peter, James, and John and says, come on, guys, let's, let's go up on this mountain and pray. What a great invitation, huh? Doesn't like Jesus say, hey, you want to come pray with me? Of course, he says that to you and me every day. I don't know that we recognize that invitation or accept it. I can only speak for myself and say that I don't. He says, come on up and pray. And, 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 and while on at one hand, it, that's very exciting. And on another hand, it, it's, it's a little intimidating, you know, because, I mean, have you heard Jesus pray? It's, it's like nothing they've ever heard before. What, what, what good are, are my little prayers when, whenever, whenever he can pray like that? Well, why does he even invite me to, to come along? I, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's a little embarrassing, I, you know, the way that I pray when I listen to him. You know, we, we do that. We, 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 we somehow grade people's prayers. Well, that was a powerful prayer. Understand that when we talk to God, the power is not in what we say. It's in who we speak to. And they had this invitation because Jesus wanted them to be part of this with him and his father. It wasn't so they could impress him with their prayers. And when he calls us to prayer, it's not so that we can impress him with our prayers or our flowery prayers. You know, we don't have to pray in King James. You know, we, we can just talk to him. And he wants that. And so they're there and the guys start to fall asleep. It happens, doesn't it? You know? Sometimes, you know, when you're up here preaching, you think your last name must be melatonin because you, you see the people, you know, and they're, they're, they're the head blob thing. And, and, and I get it, you know, sometimes we don't want to go to sleep, but we, we, we just do. The, the eyes get heavy and, 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 you know, there's nothing we can do to, to stay awake. I, I, I used to work at a place where I worked the midnight shift and, and some genius thought that 8 o'clock in the morning was a good time for a staff meeting after I'd been up all night. And then they were surprised when I was snoring in the middle of the meeting, you know. I, I was tired. Sometimes you, you just go to sleep. These guys were tired. It had been a long stretch. Let's not throw them under the bus for going to sleep. But when they kind of woke up, they saw Jesus and he's talking to two guys. Now, wait a minute. I know I dozed off there for a second, but where'd they come from? Because there was only four of us that came up there. And this light, this light that, that, that comes from Jesus is like nothing that I've ever seen before. It's brighter than, than the noonday sun. It, 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 even here in the daylight, I see this light. It's the purest light that I've ever seen. And, and, and it doesn't, it, it just seems to be coming from him. And, and, and these guys seem to, to be caught up in that same glory. And, and, and what, is, what in the world is this? I mean, can you imagine, you know, dozing off and waking up to that? You know, when you first wake up, you're not sure what's going on anyway. I, you know, a couple Sundays ago, I went over from church. I, I dozed off on the couch. I woke up and, and, and yelled at Debbie, we're late for church. We gotta go. I thought it was nine o'clock in the morning instead of three o'clock in the afternoon. You know, you wake up, you're not real sharp. And these guys look over and they see this, and and and, and it's amazing. And Jesus is talking with these guys. That's interesting. What are they even doing there? You ever wonder that? I mean, really. Why'd they get the invitation? Uh, you know, why, why, why bring Moses and Elijah down to this mountain to, to, to chat? Do, do we think that Jesus wanted to, you know, needed to talk to them? That, that, that he needed encouragement from them or instruction from them? I, I don't think so. Why were they there? They were there for the benefit of the disciples. 
I notice it says they, 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 were, they were talking about Jesus' soon departure. They were talking with him about the same thing that Jesus had been talking with these guys about around the fire. His crucifixion, his resurrection, his ascension. Now, I, I don't know if this is when somebody came up with the idea of, of, a, of a name tag. But how'd they know who they were? I, you know, hello, my name is Moses. I don't think so. How did they know this was Moses and Elijah? They clearly did. And, and you can read, and there's a lot of different ideas on, on how they knew. And, and there's two that kind of make sense to me. The, the first one is, is that as they listened to Jesus talk with them, that they figured it out. It, that's possible. But I tend to think that the same Holy Spirit that had said to Peter, is the Christ, the Son of the living God, speaks into his heart and says, Behold my servants, Moses and Elijah. And why Moses and Elijah? See, isn't it fun when you start asking questions? You never know where it's going to go. Why Moses and Elijah? Of all the people in the Old Testament, why them? Moses was the great lawgiver. Was he not? He he came down from the mountain with the Ten Commandments. He was the one that was. I mean, he he was he was tied to the law in the eyes of the Jews. That was him. I mean, he was the lawgiver. The law had come down from God through him. And Elijah was considered the greatest of the prophets. And Jesus has these guys here to see this to hear them have this conversation this one who represents the law this one who represents the prophets all of them have pointed forward to me have pointed forward to this moment that I'm talking about whenever I tell you that I must be betrayed and that I must be killed and that I will rise again and that I will send to the Father understand that Moses and Elijah understood that and have been looking forward to that the law and the prophets testify that what I am telling you is true I understand that you're discouraged and you're shaken right now but I have brought Moses and Elijah to you just to say Amen. This is the plan. It's not spiraling out of control. And I know that you're having a hard time understanding that now. And, and I wanted to reassure you. It's incredible to me that, that God was, was so concerned about them and, and about their, their, their frame of mind at that moment that, that, that he went to all of this bother <laughs> to bring Moses and Elijah down and to, uh, to uh, allow the, the disciples to see him in his glory just to encourage them. But when you get discouraged, think of this story. And then look around and see all of the things that God does on your behalf to encourage you, to calm your mind, to give you confidence when, when the knees have gone a little weak. That's why they had come. And that's why they were talking about the crucifixion, the resurrection. And as Moses and Elijah are departing, which is interesting, too, I just, as an aside, I, anybody else here think, oh, I think I'm going to follow them and see where they go? They were going. 
they left. And Peter, and I, I love the fact, you know, the scripture there says that he doesn't know what he was saying. Gee, that's not unusual if you be, you know, I, and or for us, right? I mean, half the time we're not sure what, you know, what we're supposed to do or say. And, you know, we, we, we avoid situations because we're afraid we're going to say the wrong thing. And, and, and Peter says, well, you know, let us build three, three tents here, three tabernacles here for you. This, this was really something. This, this was amazing. I mean, we, we've got to mark this spot. This, this is holy ground where, where you met with, with Moses and Elijah. Let us build that. See, he, he was having this, this, this experience on this, the top of this mountain. And he wanted to stay there. He wanted to, to build those things and, and to mark that and to celebrate that. I find it really, really noteworthy that Scripture does not tell us where this happened. Just a mountain. Just a hill somewhere over there. Because it's not about that mountain. And it's not about that hill. And it's not about Moses and Elijah. It's about Christ. And we may have our our, our mountaintop experiences, but it's not where we're supposed to stay. And there is no holy place. This parking lot is every bit as a holy a place as that building over there or any other building or cathedral you'd like to go into. It is the presence of the living God that makes the place holy. Peter says, let's mark it. It's like, oh, Pete. <laughs> what good is that going to do? Really, what good is that going to do? So now you're going to have you're going to have three little tabernacles up here. And, and, and then what? You know, the, the, the four of us are going to sit here and look at them? What does that accomplish? And even if you go down and, and bring up the disciples and maybe a few other people, a few people will, will see these tabernacles that will point back to something that has already happened. And I'm not talking about what has happened, Pete. And the focus is not here. The, 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 the idea of this conversation was to prepare you for what was to come, what really matters. Because if we stay here, it's just a few guys. But if you'll come down this mountain with me, Peter, we will change the world. We will conquer sin. I will conquer it and you will proclaim it. We will set the captives free, Peter. Why in the world would you want to stay on this hill and look at these buildings when you could go down and do the work of Almighty God and build the temple of God in men and women throughout the generations and generations and instead of three temples, build billions and billions of temples around the world to the glory of God. And just in case they weren't sure, <laughs> I love the fact that this cloud comes and embraces them. Think about that. You know, you've got the cloud over and over again in Scripture. What do we see? We see that the cloud is a, as, as the, 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 the visible presence of the Spirit of God. And so they stand here on this mountaintop with the physical person of Christ with the, 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 the cloud of the presence of the Spirit of God, and they hear the voice of the Father. The Trinity embraces them. It says, this is my son. Just listen to him. 
See, it may not make sense to you. But trust him. There are plenty of things in this world right now that do not make sense to us. But just trust him. He is the Almighty. We rest in him. How great thou art indeed. And so let us not be discouraged by circumstances, but let us be encouraged by who it is that we serve. By who it is that we love and by who it is that loves us. Let's not worry about holy places. Let us not worry uh, about mountaintop experiences. Let us be about the work of the Father, empowered by the Spirit of the living God to go and do it. Let us go and build tabernacles throughout our community as we share the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us see things through his eyes. Let us speak things through his word. Let us hear and understand with the mind of Christ. These guys saw something incredible. But it is no more incredible than what you and I will see if we will allow ourselves to see through the eyes of God. Amen.
And now I bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. May your life be transfigured this week. May you see the light of the glory of God. May he open your eyes to the limitless possibilities to build the kingdom of God. To the honor and glory of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.